Welcome to This Week in Canton City Schools, where we'll bring you news and information from inside the Canton City School District. I'm Jacqueline Power, the Broadcast Media Program Instructor here at the Timken Career Campus of McKinley High School and your host today. On today's show, we will have Dan Mucci from Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health of Stark County discussing their services available to our families and students, along with some upcoming events. We will also get to show you the Stark County Schools mental health campaign videos that feature our very own Caleb Ruffin, Al Assad, and Emilion Card. They are all broadcast media seniors who worked in collaboration with students from all over Stark County to raise awareness of mental well being and health in teenagers. Sit tight. All of that starts right now. Me and my friends take a break and find somewhere to take a minute. We take a couple deep breaths and collect our thoughts and then come back. It's important to us that we get some time away from others just to spend some time thinking on our own. Canton City Schools McKinley High School partnered with our area high schools to help raise awareness for the mental health and wellness of teenagers through a campaign, Stark County Schools Mental Health Week, which happens each year. Three of my senior level media students got the opportunity to be a part of this initiative this year. You just viewed one of the many videos pushed out on social media via the Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health Organization, and it is from our McKinley High School spokesperson, Caleb Ruffin, who has chosen to represent our school district in this county level project. Here to tell us more about that week and give us some insight on the work that is done with our local high school students is Dan Mucci, Marketing and Development Coordinator for Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health of Stark County. Thank you so much for being here and finally got you in the studio. Um, before we get into the details of what exactly the agency provides for our community and some of those upcoming events that we'll discuss, I want to talk specifically about Stark County Schools Mental Health Week, and then later we can discuss um, your role with the agency and kind of some of the supports that it provides. So first, what is Stark County Mental Health Week, and what is the overall goal of the week? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here. And through our many emails and talking, it's <laughs> nice to finally meet you. Yeah. So Stark County Schools Mental Health Week is a week where we want to push a positive message out to students from right now all the way from preschool all the way up to our seniors in high school. And so this week encompasses a lot of messaging either through JPEGs for the older students mm -hmm. or morning announcements for our, our elementary and middle school students. Okay. And... Obviously, every great idea has to start somewhere. So where did the idea come from? So about th four years ago, we were sitting around in March, and we said, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. Right. And so what are we going to do with our partner school districts? And so the first year, um, because of the short window, we just did some posters and morning announcements. From there, we decided to break it down into each grade level. So as you can see behind us, you know, each grade level has their own poster. So an elementary school student walking through the building sees elementary school students. The middle school students see people that reflect middle school. And so our high school students, we actually have one student mental health champion for each of our participating high schools. And their picture is on that poster. So as the high school students walk through the school building, they not only see somebody from their school district, but they see somebody representing the other school districts. And then for the middle school and elementary schools, they have a morning announcement that's read. So again, it's just a positive quote or message. Okay. Uh, it could be from an actor, an athlete, their, a book, Dr. Seuss, whatever. Um, we choose to give them. The middle school students also get a mood-changing colored pencil. And then this year, our elementary students got a bookmark that they can write a positive message on it, but they can also erase it. So if they're home reading with mom and dad, they might not like the message, they can write a new message. If they're in the classroom reading a book, they can change the message out again. So it's just kind of a fun way to kind of always uh, have that positive message going. And then, like I said, at the high school level, we do put out the JPEG images, and then they also get to see their self-care videos that our student mental health champions have done. And then we've also created a Unity video. So CNA writes a script. Um, all participating high schools get a line or two in that script. 
then we put the entire video together, and then that video is shared out. So it really does bring the entire community together, um, and it does present a unified front around mental health. Yeah, I do know, uh, I think last year was our, at least for Kansas City, so I'm not 100% sure on the timing of exactly how and when and where it kind of came about. Um, and you kind of did touch on the value of it. So really, truly, why is a week like this so valuable with a campaign like this? So we all know everything is challenging in these days. And just coming out of the pandemic, mental health really touched everybody, youth, adults, parents, legal guardians. But for kids, um, they really felt the effect of the pandemic maybe more than everybody else with yeah. isolation, um, not seeing their friends, sports, extracurriculars being canceled. So this week really reinforces that positive message. And by our students creating peer-to-peer -peer messaging, any Stark County student can see one of those videos and probably feel or empathize with that student. Right. And the way the student mental health champions are picked through each school um, really shows a reflective of Stark County in general. So we have our athletes that are represented. We have honor students who are represented. We have band and theater students. We have just kids who go to school every day and do the academic part. Um, so really, everybody should see somebody in there. And it's really amazing because we don't even ask the schools like how they pick their people. But when they pick them, it just comes out being that unified message. And so um, if a student can look and identify another student that looks and feels like they do, yeah it's that much more powerful than you as a teacher. Not that you're not important, but me as a dad even saying the message, yeah. it's more important that a student sees another student. It does hold, I think, a little more value when they can see almost their own reflection in at least someone that participated in the campaign. So we did talk that it's kind of countywide. So who participates in this? So we have Alliance Canton and Maslin City Schools, and then we have Canton Local, uh, Jackson, Lake, Marlington, Plain Local, Sandy Valley, Tesla, North Canton City Schools, Louisville City Schools, Perry Local Schools, and then this year the Catholic schools are participating, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas and Central Catholic. What a huge amount of young people that really can be impacted and that you have the opportunity to kind of breathe that life into that they may very well need. Um, so who gets to see all of the these videos that come from the schools and how can we see them right now? Sure, so let me finish up the last point you talked yes. to. So we're gonna touch over 50,000 students this year in Stark County with all the messaging. But to answer your questions about the videos right now, they're being pushed out on CNA social media channels. And then all of our school districts have been asked to also reach in and share those out. And then um, hopefully the students themselves are seeing their own videos, and then they'll also share them as well. And then this year, the Hall of Fame has agreed to be a partner. So they are actually going to put the Unity video in Centennial Plaza on the video screen. And then the students don't know this yet, but Ohio State Coach Ryan Day taped a special message that we are going to share out with all the countywide students. Um, as you may or may not know, Coach Day is a huge advocate for mental health. Um, he had a personal issue touch his childhood. And then recently on the Today Show, of course, Harry Miller, one of his football players, uh, announced his own struggle with that. And so we reached out to Coach Day, and he is such a huge advocate, agreed to do it in a heartbeat. So um, that video will also be up in Centennial Plaza, and then all 27 student mental health champion videos will also be up on the plaza. So. so it works out as a kind of a good transition that we can transition to two of my young yes. people that happen to be football <laughs> players. Um, I have Caleb Ruffin and Al Assad on the set with us today. They are two of my students that participated in this year's campaign. So. Thank you guys for coming from main campus to come back downtown when you've already had me twice this week. Um, so you were a part of this campaign and I kind of sprung it on you and said, hey, I have this really cool idea. We're gonna put this thing together. I know for countywide, other kids and other schools are gonna do it. So kind of what was your initial thought when I asked you to be a part of this? So we'll start with you, Ella. Um, my first thought is, uh, I, I, I always wanted to talk about something like that because that's not some anybody talks about. It's not something you hear on a regular day basis. 
And uh, I just had to do it because, you know, everybody have a different story and different emotions, so that's why I really wanted to do it. <laughs> um. So what's your initial thought, Kayla? I was gonna say, um, you just... I, so I did choose um, several of my students, like, you're fantastic anytime. I'm like, okay, I have some extra kids and they're really great on camera and they sound really great and they're really articulate and powerful. And so Caleb was the chosen spokesperson from Kansas City. And then I had a couple of my other uh, young people that I knew, Allah and Caleb are football teammates and good friends and I've thrown them on the set together for the sports show. So I knew I can't have one without the other. So I was like, no matter what, I have to send something of Allah. Um, but Caleb, you were our spokesperson. You're on the poster. Uh, so when I said, oh, by the way, you are chosen for this and I would like you to do this to represent McKinley High School and Canton City Schools, what was your initial thought? Um, really, it was just, it was, oh, I can talk about something that really can help people and that, um, that I was chosen to also be on the poster. And I, got to, I just want to put out there, I'm the biggest picture on the poster. So, um, it's but, perfect. I think it should be that way. You should be well but, uh, represented. It, it was a nice feeling to know that I was chosen. And then when I was asked to uh, do it, it was just like, oh, Ms. Powers just asked me to do something else. So it was, it was just like, <laughs> no I'll big do deal, it right? But yeah. then, then when you see it's bigger than that. So, okay. And then um, why do you guys feel like mental health and wellness is a topic that should be discussed amongst teenagers? So we'll kind of take you guys' approach from there. I know the campaign runs the gamut of young people all the way up, but since you're high school students, kind of what, why is this an important topic that we should talk about? Uh, as a kid that don't really speak English and I had to learn it, there's some stuff that happened to me in the past, but um, there's always, like, not a lot of people talk and talk to you and make sure you're doing okay. And that's a big thing, especially during COVID, like you said. Uh, it hit a lot of people in different ways because we couldn't see each other, we couldn't talk, I could, we couldn't see, no football. So it was kind of a big deal for me, so yeah. Oh yeah. Um, me, mentally, I was, I was always stable, but um, I seen an article about Kevin Love and he was talking about his mental health and how it was bad, so he had to take time off. And that's when like, the NBA and the NFL started to look into it and mm -hmm. it just became a big thing and now it's known worldwide to like kids and it's something that you really need to touch base with, with your child or just with your parent. It's, um, it's something very serious that you really need to talk about sometimes, so. All right, thank you guys. You did a great job um, on the videos. Speaking of the videos, let's take a look at a few more statements of advice and reflection from Caleb and Allah. Uh, it's important. It's not something you can joke about. Uh, a lot of people go through that stuff without us knowing. And when they express themselves and sometimes people joke around, it, it gives them a different process, uh, like a different way to look at stuff. So if, if, it, if somebody tries to talk to you or reach out to you, you need to take them a little serious and not joke about, joke about it. We include everyone. We look for those that seem like they may appear to be alone or appear like they could use a friend to talk to. We try to make sure everyone feels like they have someone to connect to. Thank you, Caleb and Allah, for your thoughtful words around mental health and wellness. Coming up in the month of May, it begins Mental Health Awareness Month. Child and Adolescent Behavior Health, CNA, has been a part of Stark County community since 1976, according to their website. They provide a staff of experienced, trained professionals who work our three locations in downtown Canton, Alliance in Belton Village, and in schools located in Stark County and in the homes working with families. CNA is a group of mental health professionals that offer treatment services to children, adolescents, and their families. Here to tell us all that great stuff and more <laughs> about this agency um, and how it kind of works is Dan Mucci, who saw, you saw in our first segment with a few of my media students that were a part of the Stark County Schools Mental Health Week campaign. Thank you for sticking around no as we kick the guys off the set for part two <laughs> of our show. And I know we have a lot to cover today. So let's begin with your role within the agency and talk a bit about your passion for your work. So I want to know what you do and like 
what brought you to that? <laughs> so, uh, my role as marketing and development coordinator is obviously to get the word out about child and adolescent behavioral health. Um, I write grants for the agency, so um, that's part of my role as well, to identify areas that um, we could either use for training or improvement of our buildings or anything like that. Um, I'm also in charge of the website and social media. And then I come out and get to work with great community partners like yourselves and our uh, eight partner school districts. So um, never a dull moment. I also help promote our events and run our events and attend um, fairs and other things we're at. So. So you're a busy guy. Yeah. The grant writing alone would keep you busy enough. So I mentioned locations already, uh -huh. um, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about the locations and maybe a um, brief uh, historical perspective. So sure. kind of locations and how did we get to where we are? Right. So we started in 1976 a while ago, and back then... Um, there was a huge stigma around mental health, and there were mental health behavioral facilities out there, but there was none designated strictly for children. So we were, we're unique in that we work with children from zero to 24 years of age. And so we do not really go into the adult population at all. Once they reach that college age, we kind of refer them out to other areas. Right. And so we organically grew like everything else as the knee became more relevant. Mm -hmm. We then expanded out to Alliance. So we're located on State Street um, in Alliance. We have our office downtown Canton at Shipley, where the Shipley uh, Clinic Center is, okay. or the old Roosevelt Elementary School for your Canton City uh, yes. residents here. Um, then we grew to Belden Village. Uh, we're out there by Roosters. And then in 2018, we opened an office at the Plain Community Campus. So we are at the high school, at wow. Glen Oak High School, but not in Glen Oak High School. Okay, yeah, I know they kind of, anytime I've been over there, they kind of have a spread out campus atmosphere, almost yeah. like our downtown right. campus. We have all those, you know, there's buildings <laughs> everywhere. So you have, and you've talked a little bit about those collaborations, but you have quite an extensive list of collaborations. So talk to me about some of those collaborations that you have past what we've already discussed. Right, sure. So we collaborate, obviously, with our eight partner school districts which we kind of mentioned in the last segment, but I'll mention mm -hmm. them again. So it's Alliance, Canton City, and Maslin City Schools. And then we're in Lake, uh, Marlington, Plain, Sandy Valley, and Tesla local schools. In addition, we also partner with a number of child care centers. Um, we partner with the YMCA, the Maslin Boys and Girls Club. And then we have other fantastic partners like the Pro Football Hall of Fame who agreed to uh, you know, be a part of Mental Health Week. And we have Alt Care and of course Stark Mars, a huge partner. Yes. Uh, even though they're the overall branching uh, county agency, um, they support us tremendously and support all of our projects like we do. And of course, then we have other media partners like uh, the Repository and HBC and Q92 and so uh, Stark County Family Courts are terrific to partner with us. And so uh, very we're diversified much, yeah. group of collaborators that you have <laughs> yeah. from all walks and, and definitely able to um, work with a wide variety then of young people based right. on all those different venues. Yeah. And the word gets out there. Yeah. So um, you do provide a variety of services. Uh, what do you want families to know about your services that are available? And we did say it is child and adolescent. Yeah. And you kind of like you take <laughs> that piece of it and then you pass them on to agencies because for those of you at home that may not understand, um, our, our needs, or you can understand, I guess, <laughs> your needs change as you age. So, Correct. you know, what you would put into a younger child and, a, you know, a mid-range mm -hmm. adolescent to a high school student. Then when you become an adult, you know, you're, you do all kinds of different right. things when you're maturing. So um, I guess kind of back to my my true question was just, you know, what what kinds of services are available to the students and families of our local school districts? Yeah. So obviously school-based is huge today. Mm -hmm. uh, probably when you and I were in school, it was a guidance counselor who just kind of guided you along on your career path or to what college you were going to. But now uh, a mental health specialist or therapist needs to be in every school and every school district. Uh, that's kind of governed by uh, Governor Mike DeWine has kind of instituted that, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. So we do offer school-based services. We offer, obviously, office-based services. And then we do have some home-based services that we offer. In addition to that, we have a prevention program. So the prevention specialists work with, as I mentioned before, our preschools and our child care centers. They also go into our middle schools and talk to kids about living a substance-free lifestyle. 
they also run a program called Stark County Youth Lead Prevention that gets high school students together and they promote that message of a substance free lifestyle. We also have um, quality mental health specialists who work as what more people would know as a case manager so they can mm -hmm. go into the schools and talk to the students and make sure that they're following through with what they've learned in therapy and all that's con you know continuing on so they don't lose traction in between their visits and of course those quality mental health specialists can also then do home visits or meet with their clients in the community somewhere like a park setting or something like that. Okay, to so go along with your services, you said you have some events um, that take place throughout the throughout the year. Right. So tell me about the Canton Roundup. <laughs> so this is a first time event we're doing. It's okay. with downtown Canton businesses. And we have 17 businesses involved, both restaurants and just general boutiques and shops like that. And so we are asking people as they check out at the cash register to either round up their bill, much as you could do in the grocery store, other places, or a lot of our smaller businesses don't have those capabilities. So we're going to have tip jars there. And so somebody can make a donation, put it in the tip jar. And we also partnered recently with a company called Stark Flavor. So they're a restaurant. Um, best way to say it is they have a website and restaurants are on this website. Okay. So they are sponsoring a trophy and the business that raises the most donations uh, will get this trophy and they can display it in their business for a whole year. And then next year when we do the second annual roundup, see if they can retain the trophy. So it's a little bit of friendly competition. The whole idea behind this is, as we've talked before with the pandemic, a lot of people mm -hmm. are struggling and we know our local uh, restaurants and boutiques are struggling. Uh, in fact, everybody's not even working again back downtown. Some people are still working remote mm, or right. hybrid. So this is a good way to try to promote those businesses on our social media channels, drive people down here, not just on First Friday, but any other day of the week. And in return, they can give back to CNA and the community by asking for the donation. So really, it's a win-win situation for us and the businesses. Absolutely. And when does this kind of start, finish? Is there a time frame to this Canton Roundup? Yeah, so it's going to start May 1st and end on May 31st for the whole month. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it will be running during their normal business hours. So uh, whenever they're open, um, the jar will be there. People can make a donation. Um, and so we hope everybody participates. I agree. The downtown businesses, they've some great lunch places downtown. So yes. <laughs> um, as I alluded to earlier, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month, and you have the Duck Derby <laughs> coming up in May. So not only do we have the Canton Roundup in May, but we have something called the Duck Derby. So I'm dying to know what that is. So yeah, as you can tell, we're a little bit busy in May. <laughs> I guess. So the Duck Derby is what you can imagine, you get rubber ducks, you can adopt a duck for $10, okay. <laughs> or you can adopt a pack of ducks. So for $40, you can get five ducks. All right. And we are going to put these ducks in a stream along the West Nemeshilla Creek in North Canton. This is the second year we've done it. And you can watch your duck float, I don't know, maybe it's 100 yards. I don't know okay. how far it is. I didn't measure it out. And the winning duck gets $500. Second place gets 150, third place gets 50. And if your duck goes nowhere, mm -hmm. you can get a $25 gift card for a pizza. So it's just kind of fun. All the proceeds go to, again, support child and adolescent, uh, just our services and programs. Um, obviously with COVID, again, we planned it to be virtual. So it's gonna be on Facebook Live on uh, May 26th at noon. But next year we're hoping that we can put it in a public setting, maybe bring in a food truck, have even more fun, have, yeah. have kids come down and actually watch their duck float. Um, this year we uh, approached a couple preschools to try to do some lessons and get parents excited in the preschools to maybe, you know, have their kid adopt a duck and just have a little bit more fun with it. So yeah, there's plenty of place for it to grow. Like it yes. sounds like uh, it's a newer thing and it can totally become bigger and better every year. Yeah, so. most definitely. We just need to keep getting past, we need to float past this uh, <laughs> COVID stuff. I know, that's right? That's, yeah. that's really appropriate with the ducks. <laughs> I like that. You did bring a couple things with you today. So before, I get to the kind of the last piece of our segment here. Um, I didn't want to go past without um, 
this is the pencil that we right. talked about in the first segment. Right. So <laughs> okay. we'll see if we can get it to work. If you rub the pencil, didn't do a great job, but it's supposed it's to turn color according to your body heat. Oh, so I see it a little bit, like a little bit of a, a turn, turn. yeah. yeah. Um, here's a mini poster. So in addition to the high schools each getting big posters, okay. they also get mini posters that they can put in their windows or on their front doors. Um, this is just a sample of like the morning announcements that principals would read. Okay. So each day it's just laid out. Read this on day one, day two. We have some partners that uh, help mm -hmm. promote this. So they're on there. And then here's the bookmark that AltCare did with our partners on the back of it. So um, as you feel, you know, kids can write their message, erase their message, get oh, another yeah. marker and write it. And so... Um, and I know both of mine when they were elementary school, like this, like to write themselves little notes, a friend a note, or have something on there. Here, mom, read this for me. So, yeah, that's a really great, I think, age appropriate middle right. schoolers and, and pens and pencils. That's absolutely. Yeah. And um, so the example. And you know, yeah. kids have to read so many books a, absolutely. A, a nine weeks. So, this yes. is just something that's mine always did there AR points. Yeah. I go to, yeah. So, <laughs> I, we had so many points, and I was usually so stressed out by the end of each nine weeks, like, oh my gosh, should we make our points this time. So, um, yeah, just some little quotes on here. For day two, it was a Lady Gaga quote Why spend your whole life trying to be somebody that you're not? It's much more fun to be yourself. So, yeah. if that's a, a really cool little piece of advice, you know, just. Right pinpointing on that one particular day. So May is right around the corner. So we'll kind of finish up. Do you have some advice for teachers or parents um, to use that time to focus in on mental health and wellness? So I know for my children at home, like I pick little themes each month and <laughs> then it's my parenting way to weave things in and it's not just, oh geez, mom wants to have another conversation with us. So what kind right. of advice might you have during this month for myself as a teacher and as a mom. Yeah, so really we encourage everybody, uh, hopefully the weather's gonna break and we can oh, all get outside. I um, need some sunshine. And walk, uh, you know, if you have younger kids and they're into sports, or not even if they're into sports, throw the baseball with them, shoot a basket, do something like that, go for a walk. Um, you know, a lot of other cool things to do. Take a minute to journal at the end of the day. Write mm -hmm. out your feelings. You don't have to share those feelings. You don't have to share that notebook with anybody. You're just doing it. Um, another great tip is eat dinner together as a family. So much happens around the dinner table just asking about yeah. your day. Listen to music. Um, just... Be in the moment and be present. So those are some great things. Uh, do some breathing exercises, just kind of chill and, and hang out. Well, we just have a few seconds left. So anything that I didn't cover that you feel like I skipped over something and did I pick up on everything we need to talk about today? And we'll definitely have you back. Yeah. So I think we covered a lot today. I'm okay. so appreciative of you having me on and having a chance to talk about this. And we would love to come back and continue the yeah, dialogue. Yeah, I hope we'll continue kind of something, yeah. maybe even a monthly kind yeah. of, here's our tip for the month to kind of help our kids and our families stay in that healthy place. And like you said, COVID can get on out of here <laughs> and we can hopefully start really caring about each mm -hmm. other again and really taking such good care of each other. So um, okay. I look forward to having you back. Um, I'd like to have you back in May, maybe yes. towards the end, and we can maybe talk about some of those events again. Um, and in the fall to help us navigate <laughs> the needs of the whole child with a focus on mental health and wellness. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you again. We have learned that it shouldn't be a secret and you shouldn't struggle alone. You might not notice it, notice the signs on the outside, so it's important to check on your friends and family and make sure they're doing okay. Thanks to Dan for taking the time to sit down with us today. Thank you, Caleb Ruffin, Al Assad, and Emilion Card for agreeing to be a part of the Stark County Schools Mental Health Week and doing such a great job in putting thoughtful responses together. We will continue to bring you an inside look at the district each week. If you're a staff member and would like to have a feature story on our program, please email me at power underscore j at ccsdistrict.org and our station administrator, Bill Widener at widener underscore b at ccsdistrict.org. We would love to have you into the studio to showcase the valuable experiences our kids have here at the Canton City School District please visit our website at ccstv11.com where you can get information on all of our shows and watch us on your favorite device. We'll see you next time.